Welcome back to the JLP Network YouTube channel. My name is JLP. I'm so excited for the series finale of our series titled, Who Are You? If you did not check out part one and part two, I strongly recommend you to go ahead and check out part one and part two before you click play for part three. And so y'all, without further ado, let's go straight to it. If indeed you were able to check part one and part two, I just wanna go ahead and quickly share um, some of the things that we discussed, all right? So we discussed, again, identity is key. Identity is key. Before you even step into, I would say, your purpose or your calling or your career, um, before anything could really fall into place for you, God indeed wants us to know that our identity is rooted in him. Um, as we discussed, many people sometimes commit suicide because they don't know their God-given identity. Our God-given identity is our power. It is our strength, right? Besides Jesus, our God identity is our power, is our strength. Because even when we go through life's trials, right? Disappointment, when we understand who we are in Christ, when we understand his sole purpose for us on the earth, that keeps us going. That helps us to persevere despite the adversities that may come, despite the uncertainties that may come. We know that indeed we are the, the children of God, we belong to God, and he has a plan for us. And so at times, even though we as human beings, we may not know the next step, but because we know that our identity is rooted in Christ, then we know we have the mind of Christ, we have the spirit of God living in us that will give us promptings, will give us directions to know what it is that we ought to do while we journey through this life. And so in part three, I want to just go ahead and continue to just exaggerate on this topic, on this point. And one of the points that I really want you to take out of part three of Who Are You? The series, again, which is based on chapter three of my book, A Heart Determined. I'll go ahead and link down the book if you did not grab your copy as of yet, but I strongly recommend for you to do so. This book, again, I would not be, I would not have been able to write it without Jesus, right? Without the spirit of Christ in me. It's truly my way to encourage you, whether you live in the States or whether you live internationally, this is my way to really be that friend, to be that mentor, to speak life into you, um, allow you, right? To remind yourself to know that anything is possible for those who believe right and if you have faith you have all you need to succeed in life you have all you need to be victorious now when it comes to wanting to know who you are or when it comes to finding out your identity one of the reasons why it is necessary for you to keep this as top priority is because without your identity without knowing who you are you will be imbalanced you will be out of place in this world you won't know where you belong and when we don't know where we belong, we end up going to certain environments that is toxic for us. Again, as we said in part two, that will pollute our identity. And so at times you will see people, they may not be believers, but they put themselves in certain settings where they even pollute their identity before they even uncovered it. Amen. But glory be to God, because Jesus came on the earth, even if you found yourself going through certain environments that made you, um, you know, again, pollute your identity or that made you confused about who you are, God, because of his loving kindness, because of his great love and mercy, if you believe in his son, Jesus Christ, he has redeemed you and he's able to renew you and, pre and reveal to you the true identity that you had all along. You see, for example, every person who is currently alive today, they weren't born to, for example, be murderers. They weren't born to be stealers. God had an amazing purpose and identity for them all along. But as they began to journey in this life, and due to the things of society, what they're hearing, again, in social media, what they're hearing from media, what they've been taught in the school books, tend to make them feel, I would say, um, not confident in who they are, tend to make them feel confused concerning their identity, tend to make them feel as if they have to do this to feel accepted, or they have to um, be someone that they, they're not to feel accepted in society. But the sooner we are able to know who we are in Christ, the sooner as well we're able to execute the God-given assignments he has on our life, the sooner that we're able to execute our purpose. Why is it important for me to discuss such a topic? I'm gonna tell you why this is important. As I said in part one, there's so many confusion and chaos happening in the world. Yes, we live in a fallen world, and yes, sin is truly real, and it's because of sin that you see people do a lot of foolish things in the world, 
But however, I believe even some, even people that we say are good, right? Even the most kind hearted people, if they don't know their God given identity, they actually are perhaps living a um, lifestyle that God never intended for them to live. They perhaps are in a career that God never intended for them to have. And so when you have your God given identity, it allows you to now know what decision should you make that is in alignment to God's will for your life. What decision should you make that is in alignment concerning the calling and the purpose that God has for you? For example, let me give you guys an example right quick. There are people who are teachers, but yet they don't have any patience to save their lives. And so maybe, you know, uh, they they perhaps thought that they should have been become a teacher. But if they if they spent time with the Father, right? If they spent time with the Lord, and if they began to have that intimate relationship with God, and God begins to reveal to that individual who they are, the more that they begin to know who they are based on the time that they spend with the Lord, the more God begins to give them details concerning the plan that he has for their lives and will continue to just gear them, right? And prepare them to do the certain, the certain assignment that he ordained for them to do. Maybe it is God's plan for that individual, instead of being a teacher, maybe it is God's plan for them to be, let's say, an engineer. Or maybe it is God's plan for them uh, to be, let's say, um, how, you know, as a, a, a athlete or whatnot. And so it's very important for us to understand that being deeply rooted in our God-given identity allows us to even make the right career choices, allows us to live on purpose, to manifest our purpose on a daily basis. Speaking of manifesting your purpose, again, I believe that the foundation that is very key and necessary to even manifest your purpose is to know who you are. You see, you're never going to be able to feel, I would say, adequate or to feel confident unless you know wholly who you are. And this is why I say to many people that I know, again, even when it comes to relationship, you will never feel satisfied in a relationship unless you know the whole you, unless you yourself as an individual, you are whole. You are whole in mind, body, and spirit. And the reason why you are whole in mind, body, and spirit, or the reason you know, you're know you able to become whole in mind, body, and spirit is again by truly having an intimate relationship with God. Now, when I was writing this book, A Heart Determined, I knew I needed a strategy to be able to use this book to serve you know, as an evangelistic tool to reach the lost, to reach non-believers. Because at times there are people in the world when they believe certain beliefs, right, that are contradictory to my Christian faith, I already understand often that person is not going to grab a, a Christian book in the library or a Christian book on Amazon. And so I needed to know how to be able to write this book to also compel the non-believer to have a curiosity to step out in faith and really allow themselves to seek who they are by seeking the Lord and by seeking the truth that comes from God's word. And so the message that I want you all to take out of this entire series and even out of this finale is that you need to make sure that you know who you are in Christ. And the only way you are able to know who you are in Christ is again by truly sincerely seeking a relationship with him. Because you see in life truly, it doesn't matter if you are poor or rich, it doesn't matter if you are educated or uneducated, in life really, you just need to know these things. You need again to know who you are, you need to get again to know your purpose, and you need to know again your destination. When you know these three things, it sets you up as well to live in contentment. It sets you up to live a fulfilling life. And it sets you up to really have a heart determined because you will continue to persevere. You will continue to persevere because you know that you are living a purpose that is bigger than yourself. And when you're living out a purpose that is bigger than yourself, it is worth it to go through the difficult seasons. It is worth it to really um, become the best version of yourself and not let your weaknesses and not let your, you know, any, you know, anywhere in your life that you feel inferior to keep you from going forward, living the life that you have been gifted. Again, life is a gift. 
and it is also a journey and truly the journey of life is all about knowing the creator it's about knowing who you are in the creator it's about truly living out the purpose that he has for you amen and it's also about making sure that you remain in alignment to his perfect will in order to reach your destination so my prayer to you watching this video is for you to allow yourself this year before you launch anything, whether it is a business, a course, a book, I want to I want you to give yourself the time and opportunity to step out in faith, to find out who you are by knowing who he is, he is by asking him himself, the creator, God, God, who am I? What is your plan and purpose for my life? Why am I here on the earth? What assignments that you have for my life? And as you begin to take to have these dialogues with the Lord, he will begin to open himself up to you because the Bible makes it clear when we seek God in faith. Right. He is faithful to answer us and he will reveal to us the secret things that we do not know of. And I strongly believe that is true because he has done it in my life. Many times, you know, people who are well versed in philosophy, those who are truly bright, truly intelligent, they want to know all the evidence before they start believing that there's a God, before they start believing that there's an afterlife, before they start believing in heaven or hell. But what I want for everyone to understand, whomever get across this video, is that when it comes to God and when it comes to his kingdom, and even when it comes to life itself, it's a matter of believing before seeing. It is when you believe before seeing that you began to experience what your eyes have never seen, that you began to know a God that you have never seen, that you began to understand why you are here and why it is necessary for you to make sure before you take your final breath that you live the life that you were intended to live according to God's truth. I wanna take this time to really pray for you I really do. And if you enjoy the series and if you enjoy the series finale, which is truly short and sweet, because I just want again to just culminate everything that we discussed as far. I want you to go ahead and um, stick along with me as I pray to you, because I want again this year of 2022 for you not to doubt your identity. I don't want you to think that you need to try everything out in order to finally find yourself. Again, that is a lie. You don't need to do all of that. All you need to do is to start with faith. Start with faith and curiosity to know God and to know who you are in Him. And He is so faithful to reveal Himself to you. You see, that's what I love about Abraham. You see, Abraham, his family, they did not believe in the God, right? The creator of heaven and earth, Yahweh. But however, Abraham, Abraham had faith enough. When he was looking at the creation, he was saying to himself, you know, Whomever created this, whomever created the sky and the waters and the animals, he is the one that I will worship. He is the one that I will serve. And so for even those who perhaps never, you know, heard of Jesus, God in his infinite mercy, when he sees such a curious person wanting to know the bigger answers to life, wanting to know for sure why they are here and who made all of this beauty, he in his mercy will direct that individual to find him, will direct that individual um, to really receive the answers that they're looking for. And today I believe you are that individual. And if you need answers, I'm telling you, he will point you to the answer. And as a matter of fact, he is the answer. He truly is. At the end of the day, even if you have everything that you've ever dreamed of, even if you have everything that you've ever written on your vision board without Christ, you will still feel empty without the Lord, without you having an intimate relationship with God, you will still feel empty because you see, he is the one that gives us purpose. He is the one that makes the works of our hand worthy, right? He is the one that makes the work of our hand have value, have great worth. Everything that God touches, he blesses and he calls it to be a blessing to other people as well. And so even when I do certain things, whether it be art that I create, whether it be Christian content, if God is not in the mix of it all, if God is not the one who is my foundation, it is truly meaningless. Yes, it may inspire someone, but even inspiration truly 
is nothing like transformation. I want to make art. I want to make work, right? I want the works of my hand to really exhort people to be transformed, to really exhort people to live a purposeful life, to really exhort people to not settle for less than, but to make sure that they receive everything that God has for them according to his word. Time is running up, y'all. I truly believe that. I truly believe we are living in the last days. And because of that, I truly believe this is your hour to really know who you are, to really know who you are. Set time apart for you to seek out God, to know who you are, to know your purpose. Don't just do what you see everybody else doing. You know, don't just, you know, follow the latest trend, but follow Jesus. Find out what it is that he wants you to do. Don't seek out what's popular and don't want to be, don't, don't seek out what's popular and also don't try to be popular. Be just who God created you to be. It is when you are who God created you to be as well that you begin to see that everything that you do, he anoints and he blesses and he calls to be fruitful and he calls to multiply. And so maybe you find yourself in a season where it's like everything you touch is not multiplying, it's not being fruitful, it's not bringing you any wealth, any goodness. Sometimes it's not because you don't have the right resources, but perhaps it's because you're not walking in your true identity and you're not walking in your true calling. Think about it. And this is why some of the chaos, again, is a result in the world is because you have a lot of people they're walking in an ident identity that is not blessed by God that is not God ordained this is not the identity that God had for them and so many people because of their identity they find themselves doing certain things whether that be a career whether that be certain job opportunities that they take or whether that be any type of opportunities in any industry and they find themselves unfulfilled they find themselves stressed out again they find themselves just empty. And so this is why, again, I keep saying this. I know I probably sound like a broken record. It is time in 2022 for you to know who you are. You see, there's going to come a point in time where every soul on the earth will not say that there isn't a God. I, I strongly believe that. There's, there's going to come a time where atheism, right, the belief of people saying there's no God, won't exist. Because of, because of the truth of God that will truly be all around the world. God is going to reveal himself even more so while there is so much darkness on the earth, while there's so much foolishness and wickedness, God's truth will continuously prevail. And so when God's truth continues to prevail, truly, if people refuse him, if people refuse him and as well as who he called them to be, it is not going to do out of their disbelief, but it's going to be due because of their arrogance, because of pridefulness. And this is why sometimes, you know, you will see people, they're so bright, they're so smart, they're so well accomplished. And yet because of their arrogance and pride, they choose to not believe there isn't a God. It's not because they don't know God is real, because again, the evidence is all around us. The evidence is all around us. And so would you be like a child, as Jesus said, and would you just have faith and curiosity to give God a chance, to give Jesus a chance, to open yourself up to receive the answers that you've been searching so desperately for that you cannot find anywhere? I want to go ahead and pray for you before I close this series finale. And so if you believe that, again, you are ready to live a meaningful life, you are ready to live a fulfilling life, you are ready to make a true lasting difference in the world, and you are ready for what's real. You don't, you don't want what's superficial anymore. You don't want what you're saying on the latest, you know, news, or you don't want to just, you know, do the latest trends, but you want to be at peace with yourself. I want you to say this prayer. Lord Jesus, I may not never have heard who you are, but today I choose 
to step out of faith, to allow you to receive, to reveal yourself to me. I'm desperate to know who I'm, who I am. I'm desperate to know the truth of why I'm here. I'm desperate to know what it is that I was born to do. I'm here, oh God, asking you, reveal yourself to me. Reveal to me your identity for me. And today by faith, I'm choosing to believe in Jesus. I'm choosing to surrender my life to him. And I choose to testify of your goodness once you make yourself known to me. I confess of my sins. I ask that you would forgive me of my sins. And I pray that you would make me new today. In Jesus' name, amen. If you made this prayer, I want to tell you that you did not make this prayer in vain. You really didn't. And I want to tell you as well that when you step out in faith to give God the opportunity to reveal himself to you, that he truly will reveal himself to you. You may not feel as if he's still not real. You may not feel any manifestation of a change. But the more that you take these, state, these, these faith steps, the more that you begin to have that childlike wonder, curiosity, to know why you are here, to know why there, you know, there is a God and to know why all of these things has happened to you, why all of these things that you have endured in life have brought you to this point. God in his faithfulness, he will reveal it to you. Again, I want to recommend you, um, if you can, go ahead and, you know, purchase a Bible on Amazon or anywhere books are sold, purchase a Bible. And when, once you purchase this Bible, I want you as well, once you receive that Bible, just like a child that does not question certain things, but just have a joyful heart to receive, I want you to pray to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Christ and as well as the Spirit of Yahweh, the Creator of heaven and earth. And just say, Holy Spirit, reveal to me who I am in God's word. Reveal to me who God is in Jesus' name. And I'm telling you, he will begin to reveal himself to you. It all starts with faith. And that is why in A Heart Determined, chapter one was all about unstoppable faith because it truly does all start with faith. That is amazing, isn't it? It all starts with faith. Sometimes we work backwards. Sometimes again, in our in our human mind, we want the evidence, we want the facts. You know, we want to see in order to believe. But God's saying, no, believe before you see. And the more that you believe before you see, I will show you my mysteries. I will show you my supernatural power and glory. Thank you so much for tuning in to our series, Who Are You? You know, it's such a great blessing to be able to share with you um, God's word and to be able to encourage you. This is truly why I'm placed on this earth to do is to encourage, challenge and inspire you to live life to the fullest from a Christian perspective. It's to point you to the creator and to know that all things are possible with Christ Jesus. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you enjoy this video, please go ahead and like and also make sure to subscribe to the JLP Network YouTube channel to receive more Christian content. And if you believe that this video will be a blessing to those who you know, don't hesitate. Go ahead and share it with them. Thank you so much. God bless. Stay encouraged. Until next time. Peace out. Take care.